In the previous tutorial, we talked about measures of central tendency and how in this example, all of the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode, were the same. They were all five. So they all appeared to be pretty good indicators of the central tendency of all of these observations. However, let's say that we have a new sample. I'm going to get rid of all of these. And let's say that our sample now contains the numbers 2, 2, 2, 3, 5, 5, 5, and 8. So we're going to adjust our frequency histogram a little bit. Now there's one observation over 8. The frequency is 1. And there are three observations of 2, giving 2 a frequency of 3. So over the value of 2, we plot a bar that goes up to 3. The point is, the heights of these two bars over 2 and 5 should now be equal, because they both have the same frequency. Now in this case, if we want to use the mode to describe this, well, there are now two modes. So that's not as good of a measure of central tendency. If we calculate the mean, the new mean is as follows. So recall this formula. Mean equals the sum of all of these observations divided by n. And n is now 8, because now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 observations in our sample. Calculate this is going to be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 8. Okay. So I believe this equals 32, and we divide that by 8. So now our new mean is 4. But if we want to do the median, recall if we have an even number of observations like we do here, we take the average of the middle two numbers, or 3 and 5. So 3 plus 5 divided by 2, again, equals 4. The mean and the median are the same. And you can see that they appear to be pretty good measures of the central tendency of this distribution. The mode, in this case, is not as good of a measure of central tendency because now there's more than one mode. However, let's say that we added an extreme outlier to this data set, a value of 100. I can't even go that far on this x-axis given the space here, but say it's one observation and it's way out here. Now the mean is going to be much larger. Just estimating it from this, it's going to be 132 divided by 9, which is about 15, roughly. So in other words, the mean is now going to be way out here. You can think of the mean as a measure of central tendency, which tends to balance the overall weight of your distribution. Think of it as having a particular mass associated with it. The median, on the other hand, is just simply dividing all your data into equal halves to the left and the right of the median. So now that we've added another value, put 3 and 5 back here, we now have an n of 9. That's an odd number of observations. And so now our median is going to be 5. Okay. There's an equal number of observations to the left and to the right of the median. It splits your data right down the middle. Think of it as the median in a road. So in this case, when we have an extreme outlier, or more than two modes, the median appears to be a better measure of central tendency than the others.